What was the other thing I was going to say? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our channel, Retired Renovators. Um, my husband Gary and I are renovating our big brick house in Paducah, Kentucky. And I've been working on the brick restoration and the internal wall in the kitchen for, um, well, several weeks while Gary's been working on some other things and framing and so on. And today I wanted to talk to you just about a couple of issues that I've discovered that's helpful about um, doing brick. All right, so as you can tell from this brick back here, it is um, old historic brick. This brick is over a hundred years old and um, so the kind of mortar that you use is really important to consider and I've done a lot of research about this. Let me say that I am not a mason expert. I'm not a professional. I'm doing this just for our own house. It's the decisions that I'm making and for you professional masons out there who are doing this, if you just roll your eyes when you see the stuff I'm doing. Um, I'm trying my best and for those of you who are working on your own homes and want some tips I thought it might be helpful if I showed you some of the things that I discovered. First of all, and this might seem like a little thing, but when you're working with mortar um, your hands get really dry. I mean everything of your body gets dry, but your hands in particular. So I've experimented with a bunch of different gloves and um, for a while I was using vinyl gloves inside regular gloves and that got too hot. And I finally settled in on this idea of using vinyl gloves. Um, these I got a box of 100, but um, I used several layers. So um, you put on a layer and then you can take your older ones and add you know two three four however many layers you want and so it doesn't matter if one individual glove is torn up um, if you're wearing several layers um, it all works out <laughs> so I do that I find that helps a lot and then with the multiple layers um, they're stronger and for working with bricks and it's just a whole lot better so use vinyl gloves, use multiple pairs. Um, when one gets too grody, you can get a new one, use it on your first layer, and then put the old ones on top, and you don't go through them too much. So that's hint number one. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about is mortar. I mentioned this in my first video. I've learned a lot since then trying to figure out what the best mortar is for historic houses. Um, there's a lot of people who say you should only use lime and sand um, and other variations. I finally settled on what's called Mortar O um, because a lot of the websites I looked at said it's okay for repointing and historical and it's sort of this middle ground. Um, so the good news is it's easy to find out what the formula for O um, mortar is. It's um, basically one part Portland cement, two parts, um, hydraulic lime, hydraulic lime, um, some kind of lime, and eight or nine, depending on who you're um, talking to, parts sand. Um, so just think one, two, and eight. Then it's just a matter of mixing that up yourself. And I want to show you the way that I've gone about um, doing that. So, all right, let's mix up some mortar. Okay, that's good. So here's the thing about mortar. Um, like I mentioned, there's all sorts of different kinds of mortar, and I think N and S are probably the most common that people use at home, but you're not really supposed to use that for historic brick. And that's because um, historic brick is more brittle, and I learned this, that mortar is the sacrificial part of um, the whole masonry experience. The, the mortar needs to be softer, than the brick. So there's a couple issues here. One is you can buy mortar, historic mortar, and I found some great places to buy it, and I did indeed buy some, and it's lovely. Works fantastically well. The only drawback is that it's ridiculously expensive. So here's, you can see how fine and beautiful this mortar is. Now this bag of mortar here, costs $40. So you can see where 
you, know, you could really run up an expense pretty quickly. So um, how to make your own mortar is the thing to do, right? Um, the other challenge is um, in our house, other renovators who were trying to deal with brick and stuff, they've got a bunch of N and S mortar around. And so once I saw the N, I thought, oh, well, I can just um, convert that. So here's, so the formula for um, N mortar is 116. So one part Portland cement, one part lime, six part sands. So if I want O, and like I mentioned, I chose O because it's used for historical repointing. It seems sort of a compromise. Um, o is one, two, and eight. Some people say nine, so eight, hefty eight. Um, and so um, an easy way to do the conversion is I take a literal cup, but it could be anything. Let me see, where's my cup? A measuring cup and I simply took my N mortar mix and put eight of these in a bucket. And so then, um, so now I have one, one, six in the bucket, but I need to have one, two, eight. So that means I just need to add one cup of lime and two more cups of sand. And voila, now I have O. And I did that and I've got to say, you know, it comes out looking pretty much like the O that you buy in the store just at a fraction of the cost. So I went through all the bags of N that we had and did that and then I'm now at the point where I have no um, pre-mixed mortar around and so I need to make it from scratch and so um, how do I do that? So then I can just start my formula is I just want one, two, and eight. So I'm taking one scoop of Portland cement two scoops of lime and eight or nine scoops of sand and mix that all up um, really together for a great look. The sand you want is um, called mason sand. Um, so don't get playground sand, get mason sand. Um, here I got it at Menards, you know, maybe $5 for a humongous bag. Um, and so you just pour it in there. So the important thing to know is your mortar is mostly sand and that um, helps. So all I can say so far that I've learned um, from working on brick and doing research and trial and error and trying to find something that works well is yes, I can buy it in the store and I've done that. It's really expensive or I can try to mix my own and, and I've been mixing my own so far and it looks like it's working out really well. I compare it with the other mortar periodically to make sure that it um, looks and feels the same. And so that's really all I want to say is when you're mixing your own historic, don't freak out about this brick. I mean, this house has been standing for over a hundred years and I've counted at least four different kinds of mortar um, in the house and I'm sure some of it's correct and some of it's not correct and the house hasn't fallen down yet. So um, you do the best you can and then you just move from there. So I hope this little video about wearing lots of vinyl gloves and mixing your own mortar might help you when you decide to do your own little bricking project. All right, that's it. Thanks. Bye. If you would take just a moment and hit the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. It helps with our analytics with um, YouTube and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything and it just lets us know that um, you are watching the video. So thanks. Really appreciate it.